G'day everyone. Well, there'll be no one here yet, I'd say. But um, it's another podcast, episode 34. For those not listening live, welcome back. Thank you very much for all the support. Um, been some passionate debates and topics after round one. And we're about to see the team for round two versus Sharks on Friday. So I'm just going to get into that now. I hope everyone's well. No one online yet, which is okay. Going to talk a little bit about the fallout from last week's game. Hopefully, have some questions to discuss and some topics to debate. Um, also, want to talk about stats and how they're um, constantly misrepresented, and sometimes and and focus on the stats that I think are probably tell you more about how the game's going. Look, we can see with our own eyes how the game's going. But um, I think when you're discussing a game, if you just look through the stats, you're not going to really understand what's going on. It's it's The game is one um, that, you know, stats are just an outcome of what's happening in the game. It's a team-based thing for a lot of the individuals, to be honest. But anyway, one of the topics I want to debate is if a forward hasn't made over 100 metres, he hasn't had a crack because I think that is something that's common out there and one of the um, things which isn't always true. And I'd be interested to hear people's thoughts on that. Have they got the team up yet? Yes, they have. And just like we thought, myself and Pete had a chat about this. G'day, everyone. Welcome. The clutch. Loving it. Hope to see minimal changes. Well, Pete and myself, I'm going to present this up now. Pete and myself said that um, Tracy would be named on the wing to replace Josh Adokar. And are there any changes in the forward pack? None. Which is exactly what you want to see. And we have Bronson Cherry and Katoni Katoga next in line. Um, next in line. Okay. If a half goes down, if Burton or Hutchison go down, Toby Sexton comes in. Marnie goes down, Turpin comes in. Man goes down, Turpin may come in. And and Josh has been named as number 23 as an outside chance of making the team. Got to love um, how positive he is after he makes a you know gets an injury every injury he gets he says he's going to be he's on track to be back early but he hasn't actually come back early yet he's been named and then not played last year but you've got to be positive i'd prefer um they let him probably not play this week so um it's great that um Bronson Cherry's so close to first grade. I think that's going to keep his hunger there. And Katoni Katoga put some really big hits on in the uh, New South Wales Cup games, which is, is a bit of an enforcer in defence. He looks like he's put on a bit of weight up top as well. And uh, being on an edge, though, his involvement can be limited depending on the way the game's going. There'll be no surprises with the Shark side. They have William Kennedy, Sione Katoa, Jesse Ramian, CSC for Talakai, Ronaldo Militalo, Braden Trindle and Nico Hines, Rudolph, Kafusi, Nakora, Wilton and McInnes at lock. With Brake Braley, Braley, the hooker. On the bench, Vanukin, Williams, Royce Hunt and Thomas Hazelton. With K 
KL Iro and Tapua, who it really looks like um, I think they've re-signed him as well. Um, he's a big boy, real big boy. So that's a tough bench. Uh, if they get an injury in the back line, the Sharks, they'll be vulnerable with that. that that's their thing. They, they're playing the power game. They know that works against Canterbury. And, you know, I, I think, look, a lot of our fans want to see, probably want to see Katoga come in for, the, for maybe Morin or, or someone like that. Um because they want to see more size on the bench. But I think it's by design that Serrato's picking a team that can that has stamina and can stay in the contest for long periods of time because we just don't have that um, line-breaking, consistent, um, line-bending prop forwards. I think Poas has got the potential, and I like that they're starting him. I think that's a lesson learned for Serrato. Um, so yeah, we've you've got got your way clutch. We've we've uh, got minimal changes in that side, and I think that's the way to go. I really do. But we got some questions. Is is anyone disappointed that we haven't brought Bronson Cherry in yet? Or you know, look the way I see it. Once the teams pick for round one, they they just have to be given time to gel. And we know it's going to happen. So there's no point dwelling on the players that aren't there. They'll get their chance. If they're good enough, they'll they'll do the job in New South Wales Cup and they'll do it really well. And they will knock down that door. I can't say after last week's performance against a very, um, I felt a pretty good Parramatta side with their attack. Um, and they had a lot of, Fringe first graders in that side, you know, Dory and Ogden were ex Bulldogs. Um, and they caused a lot of trouble for our right edge, which was very raw. But until that team's absolutely dominating their opposition, if they don't go out there and dominate Newtown this week, which I don't think they will because they're, they're rather, Newtown are a very, um, got a lot of experience in that side as well and a lot of talent which is ready to play NRL almost. I think we have the talent and we've I think our forwards are really underdone in New South Wales Cup. That's the problem. Knight doesn't look too far away. Patoga looks almost ready. But the likes of Patolo and and Jack Todd's too young yet. It it will it'll develop. But Patolo's nowhere near ready. You know, it's just not not where it's at there. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about last week's game, I think. I think that's not a bad idea. And then we'll look forward to some of the other stuff. But Sharks have had the wood on us for quite a while. When we played them in April last year, 33 to 20. At the venue, we're six from 13 at Shark Park. And that's all they really have on the stats. They don't really have much there. Let's go to round one. Defended the first 10 minutes. We lost 26 to 8, of course. Four tries to two. Made a mini comeback from the 65th minute. Didn't get our conversions, both from the sideline. You know, one of those games. But let's look at the stats because I like to talk about the stats and how they're misrepresented. We go to the player stats. Marnie, 51 tackles, indicates possession. Their fires tackle are made 29. When have you seen a team with a player under 30 tackles? 
Most run meters, Clint Guff, Clinton Guffson, 179. Jacob Crows, 157. Unfortunately, Jacob Carraz, that's his average hit up per run is where that um, fell away for a lot of it. Hopefully they'll have good – no, they're, they're not putting the stats up there, which is ridiculous on – so annoying. On my mobile app, it seems to be there, but not there – um what i'm trying to show so they nearly had 100 more runs than us our average meters per run was better which is interesting in saying that that's another stat you got to look at average set distance 36 meters to 36.97 but they did have 15 sets within our half which restricts the amount of meters they make because they're char they were on our line all of the time so in a game where we have more of a lion's share of possession, they're probably making five metres more than us per set in all reality. So I can't – the play to the ball speed, you know, if we could have slowed them down that point ten of a second, it would have made a difference over the game. But getting back to Jacob Carazes, um, when we're looking at the, the, the stats – We've only got the top performing players there. Blake Wilson made two line breaks. One was a try. And Jacob Cray is 157. Um, G'day, Pete. Afternoon, brother. I'm just talking about this stat. If if Jacob Carraz and Blake Wilson make their average metres per hitter, our forwards make more metres. Parramatta forwards have further to run. But, you know, it's all it's all science. So so the debate is when a player, uh, if a forward doesn't make over 100 metres, he doesn't get in, he doesn't be considered as being someone who's worthy of have, sorry, people say that, that he hasn't had a dig, that he hasn't played well. If a forward only has six hit-ups in a game like kick-out, Preston had five. Now, people say the halves didn't get him the ball, but there was no good ball for him to have it, and their job is to defend those edges and cover both sides of the ruck, you know, to tie things up and close them down. And both of our men did that really well. They The communication on the edges was strong. You could see it out there if you, if you paid attention, watch the game a few times and focus on different parts of the game. You learn that. You just sort of watch what they're doing. It's, you can see that that must, you know, and you can make fair assumptions as well. But the point I'm making is is that when when do forwards run the ball in the game of rugby league? So looking across all teams and how, and you know, every game, forwards run it from the kickoffs. They run it... Um, if they, you know, get possession from 10 metres out and start a set of six from there with off a set play, off a 20 metre um, seven tackle set, that's when they get to run the ball. When it's grind, set for set, forwards are generally only running for majority of teams. Their forwards chime in on play three or play four, if you're lucky. <laughs> um, and in our case, when it, when your back three are only making four and five metres per run, as it turned out, um, that's going to truly limit your forwards' impact with the football. So they can be they're, – they're there to defend. They're there to control the ruck. So when I look at that game where our forwards failed, they weren't – able to slow the Parramatta play the ball down enough in the grind, which meant the Parra had were able to get off plenty of really good kicks and their good line, their good um, line and kick chase from Parra, which was discipline all game, really choked our back three. Now, Karaz, Wilson, they've done their homework on them and Taff. 
and limited limited their meters, although they were our three biggest meter getters in the game. They were still well below what they can achieve with that amount of runs usually. And that's what that's where we lost the match. Unable to put enough pressure on their kickers, although I felt sometimes, you know, we, we got a we got an in, uh, a charge down and there were some ones where they really punished um the para halves when they were trying to kick. And and that's another thing. Moses was injured and gave up the kicking a lot too. So Brown did a pretty good job, you gotta say. Um and I felt that we protected Burton really well for his kick. So we were getting the ball deep and we're doing all right. But through ill discipline um, and then getting repeat sets or then us coughing up the possession on an early ball or giving them another set late in the tackle count, which happened too often, that really put us on the back foot. And, you know, our forwards weren't able to make any yards because they didn't have the football in positions where forwards make yards. Junior Paulo isn't running it from, you know, in the grind parts of the game, he's not getting too many runs. He's getting the runs when Para are in the middle third of the field and entering our our um, entering our half. That's where he's making all the big runs, or off the kick return after they score a try, where he gets to wind up off the back fence. So it's about limiting that from those opposition teams. Uh, so for me, the the boys didn't make enough meters in the middle, obviously, but they, there was no real opportunity to. The game's changed. We don't have too many players. There's only a few, probably Jason Tamalolo, even though that's sort of stopped now. Uh, he used to do it well. Um, Bradley Clyde used to be the first one down there. So the lock the, the lock used to be the person who'd take the first hit up off a kick um, coming out of yardage. You know, the winger or a fullback would run the first one and, and they'd be there for the second hit up a lot. Um, that was sort of their bread and butter and doing that and, and defence. But um, Payne Huss is another one who can get – he's just got that motor where he just gets back and takes an early hit up sometimes, takes pressure off that back three. But the Broncos always – you know, they brought in the Wendell Sailors and the Lottie Takiris, which really kick-started winger's impact with bringing the ball back. Um so no real uh, questions as such for us to talk about or debate at this point, but um, just thought I'd like to talk about that. Might be boring for some to listen to, but when you sit there and hear commentators, especially ex-players, it pisses me off. There's one thing ex-players know. None of them done well in a team which had no experience. <laughs> you know, you can talk about the baby Broncos and that, you're talking about origin periods and, and one-off performances with backs against the wall. But as a general rule, younger teams don't win. And they also know that without forwards, halves don't do diddly squat. But what they do know is that if they talk about Matt Burton, Bulldogs fans are going to argue yes or no. So we're all complicit in uh, the media, the media's obsession. I think when you look at the performances over the weekend, there's some other things to talk about as well. If we look back 12 months ago, St. George Illawarra come out and smashed the Gold Coast. And by smashed, I mean physically dominated that big forward pack, which has been strengthened this year, right? So there's no change there. They smashed the Titans in round one last year. Actually, some of the um, connections I heard coming through the TV were, were massive. Like, like, Hook doesn't coach babies, you know what I mean? Um, Anthony Griffin, he, he's, he's not a pussy coach. And they also led the Broncos 14-4 with about 15 minutes to go. And we're all over them, dominated and the Broncos won, ended up winning 40 to 14. And then their season fell away pretty quickly after that. Uh, you know, obviously the resilience wasn't there and they had some issues that they had to solve. 
Flanagan's there. He's got a pretty stale, stable team. A couple of ex-Bulldogs with something to prove. Um, not getting as much money as they were. RFM would be on the same. Cole Flanagan's not on half a million at the Dragons. No fucking way. <laughs> um, and well done to Kyle. I wish them guys all the best. But I'm not here to sit there and to start saying, oh, there's something wrong with Canterbury because they're doing well at St. George. What, you think Shane hasn't coached his son his whole career? Please. Look, Kyle scored a couple of tries like that at the Roosters. Closer to the ruck where he doesn't have to think as much and just runs the footy. And when they don't respect him, he can do that. At Canterbury, he was more of a focal point of our attack. For the Dragons, they're all thinking about Ben Hunt. They're all thinking about it. And even last year, Kyle was able to get some plays happening. Still doesn't engage the line enough, in my opinion. Um, Passes pass too early. But he, he was able to get some stuff happening on the right, some good balls to Ockenbore, and then good play the balls, which led to tries. Um, we had situations where, you know, he was able to get good ball out to, to the centres and the wingers, and, and Carraz and Navarillo had a field day. Uh, and Preston early in the piece. Kyle can do that. He can kick all right. But when he's playing off the front foot, he's a competent rugby league player in attack. When, uh, you know, he's having to defend all day like he was at Canterbury and do the do some of the defence that the forwards couldn't do. Um, plus, you know, all the politics that happened before the current administration was there, before... Gus Gould even come anywhere near the joint. That all started. That was before him. So, look, let's wish, let's wish um, all the best for Kyle Flanagan and Roman Fatala Mariner. But as I've said, I wouldn't have minded having Shane Flanagan as an assistant coach, where he gets to impart his knowledge, which is what he's was doing at the Dragons for a few years before he actually then went to Manly for a season. Now he's come back. I think he was there from 2020 as an assistant. So I wouldn't have minded him in an assistant role, but as a head coach, no. Nah. To me, you're a salary cap cheat as a coach when you're the one who's pulling the strings, and we all know that's the case. And when you t you've got your team injecting needles into their arm um it might happen at other teams but i've never heard of it i think that you're a little bit dodgy waiting for big mark to jump on and have a say and put some more shit on matt burton well as you can see i did i did the post yesterday back off burton um got a lot of support thank you very much few people still you know it was going to antagonize a few people and it did got called some lovely names and stuff um but that's all right that's fine you know but um yeah i'm, I'm not here to uh we've got people's families that, that listen to this podcast there's some players in there uh and their families listen to it um, they've given me feedback. There's people in our group at All Things Bulldogs. There's a whole bunch of great groups out there, out there which I'm a part of and like to contribute to, and they do a fantastic job. Steve Price just joined the Ultimate Berries page today. I approve that. Um, one of the best captains our club's had. Um, and never forget the time when, when first and gave him that premiership ring. Um, so let's go back and look at, so, so this game, 44 sets of, um, 44 sets Parramatta had with the football, 59% possession, an extra 10 minutes of, of, of footy. They were perfect in attack. They, I think they made one mistake in the first half. Well, they were, 20, they were 22 from 22 at the 35th minute. And it didn't really change much, as you can see. They still had 18 or 19 sets in the second half. 
I think we had nine sets in the first half and only 13 in the second. You can't win games of footy like that. And, and look, there has to be criticism for that. Blake Taff on the first play of the game. You know, people say, oh, he, he's got to hold the ball. That's the, that's the, the, the reality of it. Still, four, four Parramatta players in that tackle. All of them had their hands on the ball. Um, that's a 50-50 call. And may, is that going to be the precedent? And I think it will be. Um, they'll be more likely to um, call it a drop ball and have the team with the ball challenge rather than call it a penalty for a strip unless they believe they blatantly see one or they get the heads up that it was definitely one. Um, there was contested possessions when balls went up and and we just didn't get the ball or we knocked it on in, in contention in, in the contest. Post-contact metres, really um, quite even, to be honest, based on the possession. Uh, line breaks four to three, not bad considering the the domination they had with it. And people will say, oh, Parramatta were clunky. If it was round 10, they would have been more effective with the ball, but so would we. Does that bring it back into a context? Do we hold the ball more? If coulda, woulda, shoulda. Kick return metres, big difference there. Offloads, that's that's a product. I knew they were going to offload. I said that before the game. Um, they did that in their trials. They look really good with that ability, and they've got a lot of people who can do it. And we contained them for a while, but as we started to tire and couldn't get as many men into the tackle, they just let it go. And I felt we contained their second phase pretty well. The fact there's only four line breaks. But all that extra work told in the end, and, you know, that's what happened. Kicking metres, we nearly kicked as far, and we only we kicked nine times less. Tells you how important Burton is in that department. And we had four repeat sets. They got a 40-20, a fantastic 40-20 that was. Marnie did one of them for us earlier last year. But he hasn't done one, I think, since round 10 last year. So, for me, they just put more pressure on us. Um, a couple of brothers, effective tackles. That's not too bad. Um, it, obviously, we wanted it ninety percent, ninety-one percent would have been better. Fifty-fifty um, possession with the with the ball or getting close to that, our efficiency, our effective tackles will increase. No team made as many tackles as us. Well, well the night. Sorry, I can contradict. Myself, the Knights made 399 tackles in their game and got beaten by more or by a couple of points less, I think. Just contradicted myself twice. But no team made as least tackles as Parramatta. <laughs> and the fact that we made, what, 134 more tackles than them but only missed five more than them, but then you've got that ineffective tackle stuff. Every tackle they made, they sort of made count. Too many errors, too many penalties. And it's when the penalties happen as well. And on what, what on you know, was it play four or play five or play one? And kick out, nice big hit, given a $1,000 fine, which was lucky for us. Let's go back to... So what are we starting? Three dollars forty-one sharks, dollar thirty-two. I think Bulldogs with the start at eight and a half points. Hopefully this isn't going to uh, <laughs> isn't too negative. But I, I, I think with the start, I think we're um, a really good chance. I think it's going to be a close game. I worry about this Nico Hines though running from left to right, the speed he has and the ability to create create overlaps. Um, for me, he's more of a running 5'8". And, uh, you know, in hindsight, it would have been nice if Canterbury got a hold of this kid because he looked good as a reserve filling in at the Storm. I remember in a game where he just busted us open. He did it to every team for about four weeks in a row. Really good player. Braden Trindle, I, 
I really like him as a half, and he's they've developed him beautifully. And this this back line is tough as nails. Um, we're not quite as fast as we were last week. In saying that, Wilson's got some got a motor on him, and and he can get across that line. Um, Connor Tracy's no slouch. Blake Taft's pretty zippy. And um, yeah, look, if you see Bronson Cherry and, and the Fox in there, which I think is the future of our best 17, it's going to look even a lot better. But right now, this is where they're, where it's at. This is what's going to, these are the first people there. They're going to fight hard for the first 10 or 11 rounds. And barring injury, um, we're not going to see too many changes, nor should we. Here we go. Keen to see Tracy against his old club. So am I, mate. And, you know, look, I think Tracy, I love Blake Taff. If Tracy gets in the fullback at some point, not too unhappy. G'day, Brad. Hope Berto comes out and plays good or media going to smash him again. Only two runs versus Eels are running 5-8. Come on, Berto. Use your old connection to kick our critter. Well, I like that. Um, I like that, Brad. That's um, way more constructive than previous things that you said. Obviously, you get very upset when we lose and you get very passionate, and I get that, mate. Um, but one thing I really want to suggest is there's just not too many 5.8s that are going to run the footy out of our own end. You've got to look at how our team plays. Marnie is the lead playmaker and we've now got ball playing locks in in salmon and in kurt man who, who are going to get their hands on the football just as much you could see it um they and they really didn't take any risks burton did his job he defended really well as did hutchison on the other side they defended really well look i i can see that Hutch and Birdo maybe could have tried a couple of things more, getting this out of our own end from side to side. But Marnie's control on that, and I, I think it's under direction. Last year, I was heavily critical of Matty Burton and Reed Marnie, um, and also Flanagan a little bit as well, for trying too many things after we'd just been under periods where we had held teams out, where we hadn't had the ball for for plenty of sets, which is what we went through yes, on Saturday. And they tried to do Hail Mary plays to get us out of trouble. They took shortcuts. I actually applaud Burton for just doing his job and, and really kicking well and giving us, our guys, an opportunity to try and wrestle back some sort of equality in the middle. It didn't really occur till late. Para made some really um, round one type errors, but they didn't do it till the 65th minute mark, and we made them pay. And while Burton didn't touch the ball in the in the try line movements, he was there as a focal point of, of attack and someone that the, the defence thought was going to get the ball. So it's a team game. But I, 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 I want Burton to do really well too. Burton is going to be the focus all year, mate. People that I still know, that I still have a beer with, have lunch with, give me the information on what's going on here. Because that, that, that's part of their job they don't like. There is an instruction to create headlines and to feed headlines that make fans argue. And there's no more divisive um, thing in Canterbury about it's whether Burton is a, a centre or a 5-8. And it just feeds the algorithm. And whether you're defending Burton like I have or you've been angry at Burton and, and whatever else, it's still getting the same outcome. So we need to not... The players hopefully don't worry about the media, but I do worry about friends and family, and I think we can be more respectful with the way we go about it. In the heat of the moment, get off social media and then think about it a little bit and 
in some constructive ways are going about it is if Burton um, is unable to sort of get his game going and, and Haas are unable to get things going by round nine or ten, maybe we need to look at other options. Um, once they pick the side, once they're there, they have to give them a chance to develop. And even if they're playing quite well, if you've got someone knocking down the door in New South Wales Cup, well, that's when you bring them through. We let the media destabilise us last year with Carl Oluwapo, I believe. They put pressure on Flanagan when he was actually was playing well. Burton was the one who had the long pre-season, had the injury and, and had a really restricted pre-season. He was the one struggling. He couldn't kick properly. Uh, he did some good stuff as well in, the, in that couple of wins we had. He did his job. But Flanagan was actually probably the better player at the time. And Paul Crawley, who had spent... 12 months earlier, attacking Canterbury for putting funding and back into first grade, was now saying we need to get rid of him out of first grade. And while Carlo Wap, who it was good, a good learning experience for him and all the best with his recovery, I do believe it was, wasn't a really good thing. Good test for Tracy up against Mulatalo first round. Um, I think Tracy will be up against Katoa, Pete. Actually, no. Tracy will be on the left. I don't know who. Talakai plays left. Molotalo plays left. Tracy will be on it. No, I think they'll be opposite sides of the field, brother. Um, opposite opposite sides. I think um, Tracy will come up against Katoa. But still, that'll be good. And Blake Wilson will fire up against Mulatano because they had a few run-ins in, in the trial. And Blake told him to piss off. Remember when he came in and, and he waited till he was catching the ball and then tried to smash him? And Blake got up and got straight up. You didn't hurt me. Yeah, good on you, mate. You fucking you bloody idiot. I like Blake Wilson. He's got a bit of bit of fire about him. Dan, hope our forwards manage more hit-ups than our backs this week. Well, that's what I was talking about, Dan. That's the exact point I'm making. Our forwards aren't going to do more hit-ups. That's going to be an outcome of the way the game's played. If our forwards can um, put pressure on Hines and, and Trindle um, and stop them from getting away good kicks, if we can get good yardage out of Karaz and Wilson and, and Taft and have, you know, Critter probably chip in a little bit more um, from the, from that and have Trace. Tracy's really good at getting the yardage out of his own end too. So having Tracy there I think might help in that regards. If they do that and can make their average metres they normally make per run out of yardage, our forwards are going to get, um, not have to run back as far so they have more petrol in the tank. And then if we hold the ball, they get to have more runs and attack. And then if we can get some repeat sets and force some mistakes with our defence, that's when the forwards will take more hit-ups. It's the way the game plays. You know, statistically, we don't see it. We don't see it when they talk about the best players in the game. When you look at your fantasy leagues and all that sort of stuff, how many hit-ups did they have? How many metres did they make? Well, Karaz and Taff and, and Wilson had lots of hit-ups because they were coming off their, their own line all game, right? But they weren't making the yards that they normally make, which meant that our forwards were basically left there just to defend, and that's what happens. Um, they're not going to make hit-ups and runs and, and heaps of metres when we're coming off our own end. It just it can't happen. If they can generate repeat sets, if we can have lots of, um, you know, attack in their half, then our forwards come into the game and take more hit-ups and stuff like that. But um, there we go. The clutch. Keen to see New South Wales Cup squad reports. a t picked up an injury. If anyone um, wants to check and see if that's up yet and let us know and I'll go find it. Yeah, Zane T apparently has done a PCL. 
Uh, to me, he looked way off the pace anyway. But, you know, they've got to spend the cap. But they got a forward who does has won a competition. He's apparently a really good trainer. He looked pretty fit, but he wasn't. his match fitness was way down. Obviously got history in um, on the field and off it. Um, history with a with that injury and uh, had a stroke, but um, he come on, give it a crack, but looked a little bit off the pace. Uh, Patolo is way off the pace. Jack Todd, good learnings for him. Lip boy, hot boy, I think found out a little bit on the edge, and Harrison Edwards um, also underdone. There's no one really to bring into that top seventeen yet. Um, from a forward point of view, except for Katoga, and and Liam Knight is not too far off. Um, Zane named on the bench for New South Wales Cup. Well, isn't that interesting? Maybe there's nothing wrong with him. It's funny. I, that's the second time in two weeks that I've seen that report come from the same bloody Bulldogs page stating stuff which may or may not be true um but maybe they're they're just testing if he's got a pcl and they still they still don't know i don't know maybe they don't want to raise too many concerns because they know they're going to cop cop abuse as a club why did you sign this guy why did you sign him um all right, Dan, I'm going to get go and have a look at the New South Wales Cup squad. Thanks for letting me know, mate. So I'm just looking for that now. Jets versus the Bulldogs. Here we go. Just going to present it again. We won't go too much longer. Thanks for the interaction so far, lads. Been good. Do -do 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 -do. All right. How's that look? There we go. Joash Papali, Gerald Skelton, Hayes Perrin, Bronson Cherry, Eli Clark, Bailey Beyond Diodo, Toby Sexton, Knight, Turpin, Patolo. Well done to Jordan Samrani. Um, that was the thing that I wanted to talk about. When he came on, everyone talked about Hayward, which I think he added a lot of energy and straight away and helped us, no doubt. But Jordan Samrani, for me, was a difference. Playing on that edge... He's someone who looks like he can get even bigger into the mould of, you know, like the Lukies and that sort of thing. Um, as, as He's a centre, um, always been a centre, but he's got that size about him. Um, let's see if he's got a profile yet. Now, they haven't, haven't got anything on him about how big he is or anything like that. But I felt he was played really well and I just got... Fingers crossed he can get some games under his belt and not get injured. Um, be good for Chris Patolo to start. Um, Lip Boy Hot Boy was essentially, he's been dropped. And that would go down that, you know, for me, Lip Boy's always played in the middle, from what I could tell. Big learning curve for him on the weekend. That right edge that he was a part of with Sexton, Perham, and... Um, and Skelton, they just let in too many points. But they did improve immensely when Jordan Samrani got out there. Harry Hayes is another one. Um, he will defend well on that edge. He, he didn't play last week. But I think these two young guys have a huge future, both of them. Both of them come through as centres, but playing in the edge says, says a lot. Uh, Harrison Edwards, he'll be better for the run. Um, and then, you know, to me, that's a – Jack Todd's a really good young up-and-coming prop. Reese, not sure where he was last week. And Bailey did a great job. And Ted Ivano named. Looking at the Jets, Daniel Atkinson, he played really well in the trial against us. 
Billy Magoulis at 5'8". Big boy, Billy. And Puru did some good stuff in the trial versus us as well when he came on. Samuel Stone Street can play. Viola, Dimitru. You will, I you think KL Iro will join this side and play. Well, there's a chance that the likes of um, Iro might actually find himself on the bench in first grade because they have picked four forwards. There's no real backup for if something goes wrong. And maybe one of their forwards might not be ready yet. Maybe Fanukin's not 100%. Um, I'm not sure. But, you know, I, I know, our team looks like it should dominate the Jets, but that won't be the case. Hopefully they do. Um, Eli Clark, I love what this, this kid does. And Bronson is a special player and will be part of our best 17 um, at some point. And obviously, beautiful uh, Joash Papali. The fact that Tony is not named in the New South Wales Cup might indicate something as well, that they probably are going to have him be the 19th man this week or the 18th man as a minimum. To me, that's what that suggests. He will either get himself a bench spot or he will be the 18th man um, because he's he's fit, he's firing, he's ready to go. So they can make him 18th man. The following week, you'd think they're not going to put him at 18th man. He either plays or he comes back to cup. They tend to rotate that around. Yeah, so the team does look solid there, Dan. Looks very solid. What else have we got? Um, just going over some results. Let's have a look at that. Our pathways are going absolutely great guns. Um, struggling a little bit on the North Coast, the um, Andrew Johns Cup and the and the um, Laurie Daly Cups. Let's have a look here. So we've made the semi-final of the Laurie Daly Cup for the Northern Tigers. We need to get some stuff out about that. It's a fantastic effort to make the top four. Well done. Um, North Coast Bulldogs, which are from Coffs Harbour. Um, they look like they wouldn't have made anything by the look of that. Let's look at Andrew John's Cup. We didn't make, none of our two teams made the semis in, in that cup. So we're a chance of making another grand final in our pathways there. Ron Massey Cup starts this weekend, round one, and we're playing the Hawks. Do we have a team list yet? They usually don't name a team. I think you might find a player like Khaled Raja will be playing Ron Massey Cup this year. Which would be good for our Massey Cup, and it's still there's a lot more men in that in that. There's some there's some pretty tough guys running around in Ron Massey Cup. I'll tell you that now. Tasha Gale. Well, let's have a look at the ladders there. Bulldogs. Six games, five wins, one loss. Did we lose on the weekend? We must have lost it. We lost to the Eagles, did we? I don't think that's right. Sorry, I've just done myself a mischief in my brain. We did. We lost by two points. I can't believe it. Well, there you go. Their first loss of the season. Lisa Fiala Cup. I think they won 94 to nil. They did. So there you go. If we go to their ladder, they're sure to be on top. Lisa Fiola. Hope you can see what I'm doing here, yeah. Bulldogs, six wins, zero losses, 334 points scored, 40 against. Um, 
and they play the Tigers next to it. They've had four wins and only one loss. But you'll find we'll be beating the Tigers in Lisa Fiala next week. But the Tigers have got some tough girls in their team. Um, as you'd expect, Harold Matz, four wins, one draw, one bye for the Bulldogs. Western Suburbs, Maggie's on top. Always got a soft spot for the Maggie's, unless the Bulldogs are playing them. Haven't lived at Campbelltown a bit. And uh, had a few chats with old Tommy. SG Ball. We're climbing up the ladder. They had a massive win against the Sharks on the weekend. They're up to sixth. I think it is a top six in SG Ball or a top five. So we need to keep climbing. We now play the Tigers. We sit down. They have not won a game. So you expect the Bulldogs due to that playing the Tigers. No count now ch our chickens. We'll be uh, winning that match. So there we go. Let's have a look at it. Have they named? They haven't named the flag team yet, which is a shame because I was hoping they would have. And Jersey flag. We will be playing the Sharks. Let's check it. The ladders out. The Sharks go on the weekend in Jersey flag. They won. They scored 38 points and 10 against. So that's going to be a top of the table clash already. Both teams very, very good in their opening round. Um, be very interested to see how that pans out in Jersey Flag Cup. Anyone else jumped on? Burton Centre and Critter Fullback. G'day, Sam. Nice to meet you, mate. Um, we can say that for the next 10 weeks, mate. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and I would ask yourself, would you expect the coach, after having a pre-season and having, having them train a certain way, after one round, change their whole spine around? So to kick Burton out of the spine and it brings Stephen Crichton into it. I don't think that's anything but a media discussion. Cameron Smith should... You know, I can't believe he would even say that Stephen Crichton doesn't want to play centre. He's not playing where he wants to play and all this sort of shit. When you listen to Cameron Smith talk, it's never said... He doesn't say that stuff, you know, with a sort of... He doesn't say it arrogantly. It's always said it's sort of said carefully and considered, but I still just think the headlines that was going to write is just more fodder for our club and more reason to hang shit on the coach and the club. Critter, to me, could go and play fullback for any team in the top eight and do an, an adequate job, do a six or seven out of ten every week, make 200 metres, run on the fourth, chime in on some backline movements. But guess what? He's going to get caught out defence sometimes. And I don't know how elusive he's going to be from the back of the field because I haven't seen it in his games. Very workmanlike, um, but just doesn't have that zip. Where That's where fullbacks are going now, where they have that zip. And Burton Senna, like, who's the better 5'8"? Tell me. Anyone? Look, I can't... I, I'd be excited to see Bally beyond the Odo come up and and some others. Little Bailey Haywood get a shot. But you'll see when they got to defend on an edge under sufferance, why well, that's a really shit idea. Burton, he'll, he'll miss enough tackles, but he'll, he'll make a lot more than those guys will on an edge, especially under fatigue. I'll tell you that now. I've seen it. I've seen them all fail in New South Wales Cup against much lesser opposition. They're still learning. They're still developing. They're still getting better. Once they're ready to go, that's that's when we have the discussion. Oh, hello. I should have... I did not change the time so you would miss out, Mark. 
I actually got to speak to you in real time here. Tell me, Mark, if you are a coach, would you be changing the team after round one outside of injuries? Do you think Wayne Bennett would? Got another question for you. The master coach, Wayne Bennett, why didn't he pick Jake Avarillo in that team? Why did he pick Tessie New? And I think Tessie New is a really good player, by the way. I'll ask that out of you. We can be critical of our organisation for letting him go. And Pete especially knows how passionate I've been about him. That wouldn't be your squad. Well, but that's the thing, though. It wasn't my squad either. But once they picked the squad, once they picked the squad, you don't change it, do you? If you pick your squad and all things equal, the forwards knock the ball on and Toby and that don't get a chance to play, what do you think happens? Are you gonna are you gonna tell the fan base to give Serato a, if so Serato picked the squad that he did that you want and it and it fails in week one, which it would have, Toby doesn't get us out of trouble. Unfortunately, he just doesn't. Not the way that game was played. Maybe Ice's opportunities better, maybe gets us a little bit of traction moving forward. Would have been handy on that last play where we got the intercept. I reckon Toby would have been good for that. Um, but do you think, would you be sitting there telling, you know, typing away, saying, Serato needs to change the team? I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be. I'm pretty sure you'd be wanting your team to have enough time to at least give a real uh, critique on their performance, on how they're coming together and how they're gelling. Good question, Mark. Do you think Serato should have used trials more productively? I think he used the trials well. I really do. That's my answer. Um, just saw the next question. The um, I think you use them really, really productively, and I go back to your comment that you made how Flanagan used his a lot more productively. I think you weren't here when I started this this chat. The Dragons smashed the Titans round one last year and then were smashing the Broncos for 65 minutes in round two. Um, a lot of unproven stuff there, yeah. We all know Flanagan can coach. I'd be happy for him to be an assistant at the Bulldogs just to get you on that. Um, more productively, I think he did use the trials very productively. He knew what his best 17 was going to be. He didn't overplay Critter. He got some miles and confidence into Bronson Cherry's legs. He got some miles and confidence into Pawasa for Masili's legs. He got to play some long minutes. He had two players, um, one who was sick and another one got a head knock in that second game that would have played more minutes but couldn't. Shorty Moran got used effectively and got some confidence. Um, yeah, I think he used it really productively. If you want to be, no, he got to showcase Bailey Haywood. He got to showcase Joash Papa Papali and get the fan base excited about them because they really they weren't. If you've watched, I've watched Bailey Haywood closely for about two and a half, three years, and I've seen him have some pretty good games. But last year, between last year and this year, he's come a hump, he's come a long way. And if he keeps making that that growth in what he's doing in New South Wales Cup, he's going to find himself in first grade, and he's going to find some of those two hundred fifty thousand um, dollar two year contracts that Gus has given which pennies, you know, are going to find himself in reserve grade, and that'll be the plan. That'll be the plan for those kids to get in front of them, of the, 
to get in front of those fringe players. I don't put Kurt Mann in that in that picture. You don't play 165 games unless you can play. And I'm telling you now, he was one of our best on the weekend. Um, so, yeah, I think, I don't think I know that Serato used uh, those trials very constructively. And, in fact, I think he's learned a few lessons. Um, I don't think Poasa would have played in our um, opening round for the year before. Even with Tavita and all them people not available, I don't think he would have. I think, and I think he would have started him on the, off the bench and played him 10 minutes. The fact that he's starting with this guy and he's trying to build miles into his legs, um, I think that Poasa is would have been would have got an extra five or ten minutes in that second half had we got actually you know made some inroads and and got some ball, but we just didn't make it happen. Um, we kept coughing up ball, couldn't win the contested possessions, couldn't win the fifty fifties, disciplined poor, um, struggling to hold to re wrestle down the ruck, and coming off. You know, and Karaz and Wilson just couldn't make any yards off off um, our 10 metre line or off our 20 for that instance. They just got hammered all game. And their back three um, were able to get a little bit more out of um, out of them and put their forwards on the front foot. And as I said, they had 15 more attacking sets than what we had. Let's get to Adrian. G'day, mate. How you going? Nice photo. Um, Better than what you see in here. Someone compared my goatee to, you know, a hairy arsehole talking or something, which was nice. In a few weeks, I'd like to see Tracy and Sexton. A few weeks, mate. I, I just don't think that's going to be the plan at all. Bert not showing anything really bottlenecks our side. I like the word bottleneck. I think we've got a real bottleneck of talent and depth at the moment in quite a few positions. And the club is letting the juniors work their ass off to put the pressure on. They've got some players in there that really want to keep their careers going. It's not a graveyard. They haven't come here to die. They've come here to, to, to keep their careers alive. Um, hence, which created probably the issues with RFM last year and stuff like that, um, probably with Andrew Davey, where they felt they weren't being utilised. Um, Ray didn't really want to play in the middle and he felt that, you know, that he was pushed down the pecking order. Young Jackson was obviously continually having his name talked about as coming through. Jackson Torpenay pushed down the pecking order. Um, these can create issues in your roster. And I think the club's done a good job at just saying, at suggesting if you want to be a Bulldog, you want to be in the best 17 and you're not picked there, shut your mouth, put your head down and work harder. Now, not all not all personalities are going to fit in with that rhetoric, and I get that as well. And some of those personalities will leave and perform elsewhere. There's not one rule for everyone, but I think that's where the club has said for us to get the best out of our out of our club right now that's the focus we need to have we need our juniors to buy in and want to be bulldogs at any cost because as far as the panthers go their juniors don't really want to go anywhere and they said a hey, big money to leave and we had to pay burton 550 grand before he was even doing anything really to get him out of that club and critter they had no more room for him or kick out so essentially they're rejects, um, which people also need to understand. So Burton, look, I agree that we've got the depth there, mate, but I think you can't have it both ways. I watch I watch our New South Wales origin team, right? And, on, and, and that's a good example of a team that has to come together, obviously much all the highest paid people in the game um, but you get those that team that comes together when and they really maintain possession in those games 
they they held a lot of possession. They played a Penrith style, and it worked against them because Queensland picked a team that was faster and stronger. Got more passionate, just faster and stronger out wide, and they asked more questions. The point I'm getting to is that Cleary played a controlled halves game, and because his forwards really couldn't get the domination, although they had lots of possession, they didn't dominate Queensland's forwards at all. Um, at best, they were 50-50, and he was restricted to kicking, chipping, passing, obviously a lot more involved as the seven. And what was Luai doing? Luai's got a really elusive stepper, I get that, but If you're not able to win the forward ruck, um, that's another thing. If you're, when you're playing Origin as well, it's slow play the balls a lot. It's much slower play the balls a lot of the time. It's a faster game in play, but they don't police the ruck the same way as they do in the NRL. And that suits Queensland immensely. Um, New South Wales probably thinks it suits them, but it doesn't. When you've got a slow ruck, you pick a faster team, they're going to win. And I thought Stephen Crichton was our best player in Origin last year. And I've been critical of him in the past, just I thought defensively I love what I saw. And that's why he's at centre for Canterbury right now. Anyway, man was our best daylight second. I don't know about that. I thought Curran did a really good job. And um, I felt I actually felt Burton really kicked well and defended well. And Hutchison saved us on numerous occasions. But people, I don't, obviously not everyone has the time I have or the insomnia I have to watch the game as much as I do and to really focus on individuals. And, you know, I used to rate the team and I might do it again. Um, and I'm not, a, not the harshest marker. Um, you know, maybe I should mark mark them as if they're the best team and they're losing. Not Because otherwise you're being mediocre, apparently. But I just felt he did the best he could under those circumstances. Two runs is a product of being the 5'8", coming off your own line. Maybe he gets in there and takes a few runs from dummy half. Who knows? Or gets one more wide of the ruck and takes a few hit-ups and says, come come with me, boys. What, is that what you want from Burton? Is that what we want? Don't know. See you, Pete. Dogs by 1 to 12. We can hang on to the ball this week. I think it's 1 to 12 either way, Pete. That's what I think. I think it's a, much, it's a close game. Sharks are going to be very, very tough to beat. But I think we're getting closer to them. I really do. I'll be I'll be massively disappointed if we're blown off the park this week. But still, it's not going to change me. I'm not going to sit there and say change everyone in the fucking turn. I'm going to say let them gel, let them get some cohesion. We are running dead last. If I if the cohesion stats that I use for my gambling purposes, which I don't share, <laughs> right? The teams with the best cohesion win 90% of the matches. It's a fact. They're not sports bet don't want anyone to know about it because it'll fuck with their odds. And they don't give you good enough odds for the actual if they were really fair fair income, especially in the try scoring odds and all that sort of stuff. People should be at hundred to one, not at twenty to one. Fucking rip off. What do you reckon they do at training? Because they were inept in attack, coughing up the pill. They must really love the tackling practice. <sighs> That's a bit of a nasty comment. Um, obviously, that they do rep after rep after rep in attack. But honestly, man, what, any team that's turned things around, where do they... What do they say they've worked on? So what they say about um, 
what's his name at, at the Cowboys? What did he have them doing when they went from 15th to the top four? All they did was tackle for 90 days. That's all they did. And you want to know something about the Panthers? I know we're not the Panthers, we're not the Cowboys, we're the Bulldogs. I get that. You want to know what they focus on every year? Is defence. Because they know if they keep defending their line and they keep making it, in, and they don't beat themselves and they make other teams beat them, right? They keep doing that. Eventually, their passes will stick. Eventually, they will beat that team. And they have that belief, and they've been playing together since 2014, 2015, these kids, right? That's that's how it's done. They lost the first – they lost the trial in the first game last year against the Broncos. Had a lot of close wins. Lost to Parramatta twice. Won their third premiership in a row. And – and it's always funny that the new kid that comes into the team into a new position, Taylor May, I know he, he played wing outside Moga or whatever his name is a couple of years ago before he did his knee, but he was the best player on the field. He had to step in for Stephen Crichton, and he did it really well. But their attack's still not flowing. It's still not clunky. Clear he had 30 runs of the ball. They couldn't penetrate the immovable object, which is... Um, Melbourne Storm in round one. A completely spot giving the team time to jail over. If Critter's not getting the ball as often as he should, I'm thinking he needs to go to fullback. Hey, Dom. I think um, Critter, it's a fair comment. I think what's more important for us is defence. Our team, our, our fan base get obsessed with attack. And the media get ex obsessed with our attack, right? The attack develops over the year. Um, it's not a defeatist attitude to say, I'd rather us lose by two than, you know, lose by 12-4 than to go down 28-26. to 26. I think that if they focus on the defence, the attack comes. But if they don't hold the pill, as alluded to by Mark, because they don't apparently, you know, he's asking the question. Drive that bus down a train and, and and meet Gus there and tell him what you think of him. But you won't. <laughs> tell him what you think we should do. See what he reckons. Um yeah, getting back to Critter at fullback. I've just never rated him as a fullback. Does Critter want to play like a Justin Hodges? Justin Hodges, in the back of end of his career, when he, you know, from about the age of 27, 28, was a much better footballer than he was as a junior. And you'd say that he's he was as talented as, as Critter. Critter's probably got a lot, got a bit on him at the moment, to be honest. But he used to get in a dummy half and crab across on both sides of the field and just get involved and get his hand on the ball and make shit happen. And I think Crito should have that licence. But yet again, Crito catching that ball on his 10-metre line, getting it to the 15, he's going to get more touches. It's just going to make him tired, and it weakens us immensely on the edge. We just... We need to have people who can defend and can communicate and work together on an edge. Once you have that trust, then you have trust and cohesion. When they're under sufferance, they don't crack. Or they only crack once instead of cracking five times, like it's been the case for us. So that's, that's why we've got to keep good defenders in the positions they know. Because... Look, I think fullback will be where he ends up, but maybe not. I see Critter playing centre and Joe Ash Papali in two, two or three years being our fullback. So, and if we get those forwards developed and we can make things happen, then Critter comes into his own. Then he gets plenty of ball. Josh Morris used to get plenty of ball, didn't he? 
Why? Because we had a good side. Or we had a team that had a good forward pack. A long bus ride. You're the driver, mate. You're driving the bus. You're driving the bus, Mark. Get on there and drive it. Taft too small. He's, re he's as big as Reese Walsh, mate. People say Bailey Beyond Yado is, is too small. You should see him with his shirt off. He's not small. He's short. Um, Gus doesn't get involved in first grade. Well, we, we know that. Kurt, Adam Fogarty, get a get a Adam. Is it Fogarty like like Jamal Fogarty that the Prather Nasta likes to you know criticize immensely? You can't trust Braith when it comes to halves in teams that don't have established halves. You know why? Because he's got youngsters that he wants to get to bump their price up and he uses his mouth in the media to do it. Very impressive, Kurt, man, mate. Um, you know, and he seems to have time. Like, that was a thing. Um, watching him go to the line, he looked very careful and measured and very, um, he was also t basically telegraphing what he was doing, but it worked every time, you know, they made some yards off it. So, yeah, I agree with that. Um, and his defence was a, was great. They, That's the thing I want to ask. Um, Fog as in mist, Fogarty, like in Creedence Clearwater Revival Fogarty. <laughs> Loving it. Mark, what do you think of Carraz at centre? You didn't ask me that, but Mark will get on here one day and answer some of your questions, hopefully. Um, would you leave the same lineup? What would you change? Any position? Thanks, brother. Sam, I'm not changing nothing unless it's injuries for unless you get four or five rounds in and they're just an absolute debacle. I wouldn't have called called them a debacle on the weekend. I just Paramount knew our weaknesses and exploited them. And we know our, our weaknesses and tried to, to mask them a bit. And then, you know, couldn't get the possession. Um, Blake Taft, to me, as I said, they had four sets of hands on that first contact. In the past, the ref sort of flips a, you know, flips a coin. Um, flips a coin and, and says, is it a penalty or a knock-on? I believe it was hands on the ball. But I think the way forward is is that if you cop up possession, you're going to be expected to challenge to get it back. Um, and it's if they just all put their hands on the ball and all sort of using force without extending their pulling with their elbow like that, pulling, <laughs> they sort of use pressure and, for, and force it out and have someone on their arm it's all mechanical, it's all wrestling technique, and it's really difficult. I challenge any fucking fans to hold the ball in that situation, whether they're big or small, unless they're practised doing it. And um, obviously, Taft, we needed him to hold it, and we then had to defend for 10 minutes. And it set up the tone of the game. I felt terrible for him because he's a really good little player. Um I wouldn't change any position. The only people I'm potentially looking at are bringing in from a size point of view, if they're ready, are Liam Knight and um, Katani Katoga. And I'm just watching Bronson Cherry every single week to see them dominate. If I don't see New South Wales Cup physically dominate through their forward pack, that's um, 
that means that a lot of those forwards which are trying had interrupted pre-seasons harrison edwards chris patolo liam knight and if they don't dominate they're not they can't really force their way into first grade um it just because they're big oh all got experience they they've got to basically be ready to go um Marnie or Marshall King? I love Jeremy Marshall King, mate. Developed him. Dean Pay wanted him to develop into an 80-minute hooker. Did his best. Had a few injuries. When he started to hum, he decided to leave because he knew that Marnie's an 80-minute player. Simple as that. Um, Reed Marnie is still an origin-class hooker. People call him a speed bump. Sometimes that's what he's got to be. He's leading by example. He's also the one getting the big cheers from the crowd for when he's dumping big men on their ass, which he does every week. And if he's making 55 attempts and, and, and makes 45 of them, good on him. The question is, how far away are the big men when that happens? It's up to them to make sure that they're not too far away and that that line speed's good. And he's just not being targeted in a retreating defensive line, which was the case for the whole second half of last year, where they're just running in behind our ruck and he's getting caught one out. Um, at times, he sometimes needs to probably not launch in and needs to launch in in one line, if that makes sense. And I felt like a, a hooker like Michael Ennis was really good at that, really got caught one out. Um, Is the back five overused in hit-ups? Well, I'll ask you the question. If you're analysing the best teams in the competition, outside of Brisbane, who have Payne Huss, who likes to take a lot of hit-up, who gets, who just has the ability to do things other props don't have the ability to do, and that's get there and take a second hit-up or a third hit-up off out of yardage. This isn't about what about other teams. This is about how is the game played one-dimensionally, which it is. It's become that way. The, your key to success, the teams that win the premiership the last three years, the, the Melbourne Storm were very similar. The Broncos started it was by having lots of runs from their wingers and their back three and their back five, specifically. That's where it was at. And it seems to be that you keep one centre fresh and one wing a little fresher, and then you use the the other three, the main as much as you can, being the fullback, one of your wingers and one of your centers. They do the majority of the hit ups. Um, Karaz being not not having that that trial, having that back fracture, you can say that's an error of Serraldo's. Um, I think in our situation with what he brings. We want to get him ready as quickly as possible, and there's no better way to do that than to have him play first grade. Um, it's a long season, and for us, it's a it's a, it's a long nine years, and it's a long. It's going to be a long way to 2027, <laughs> the way I'm seeing it. But um, Karaz for me has to make more yards out of yardage this week. So does Wilson. And I expect Tracy should be able to assist in that area probably a little bit better than the Fox. It's why it's probably the, one of the reasons the Fox has muscled up because he's looking at the likes of these wingers like Brian Toto um, and Taruba. You've got those two, two either side just making, you know, contacting at the, at the six or seven metre and making three metres in in uh, post contact just which just puts their forwards and puts their field position just to where they need it all the time so to say we're relying too much in a scenario where if your forwards can't put enough pressure on the kicker if you can't hold down their ruck long enough that's where we, lo we lose the game that's where we didn't restrict their ability to kick deep and then their, their perfect line 
stopped us from being able to make that yardage, which puts our forwards on the front foot and forces our forwards to, you know, finally get back after the third tackle after they've just been defending so long. Like, it's just the reality of the way the game's played. Um, I would love to have a forward in our team that could get back and take some hit-ups, to take some pressure off them as well. And that's probably where I, I my one criticism was Critter didn't really do enough of the, the ruck stuff in that first half, the tough stuff, to help those boys out. Um, for me, as a captain, I'll, that's what I, I would have been focused on. Give me a, give me the ball, follow me. And, you know, you could probably make that argument about Burton potentially as well. Get back, run the ball. Um, probably not in the game plan, though. But that'll come with experience. Oh, Critter's played 100 games. Burton's played less than 100 games. Marnie's only just played over 100 games. Players with the importance they hold to their team you know, the purse strings that these players hold to our, to our team, they have to, um, they have to develop. We'll talk about them when they've played 200 games because they all will. G'day, Tim. Good to see you, mate. Um, do you think Zane Tedavano could come in for more experience and size for the NRL side? I wouldn't make any changes unless forced by injury and suspension. Well, Mark, Tedavano has been named on the bench for round two in New South Wales Cup. So is that another Canterbury-Bankstown Bulldogs fan page assumption? I don't know. Or is it just the club just, they don't, they're waiting for the doctor to let them know he's running all right, he might feel all right. Apparently a PCL, it's, it's not as painful as the others and it's not as noticeable. I, I'm, Fucking don't. Maybe that's the MCL. I don't know. I shouldn't talk about that shit. Um. Yeah, but yeah, Tim. I watched. Go watch the New South Wales Cup last week if you haven't, and just focus on Zane Tadavano, and you'll probably answer that question yourself. To me, he looks half a season away, and if he's injured himself, he's going to be um, some good experience and a good head around the place for our cup boys coming through. And that's all right. They've got to spend their cap. They've got to spend the cap. 95% of the cap. This shit from Buzz that we're under cap pressure and the reason we're asking for dispensation is because we're under pressure. Well, they should ask for dispensation whenever they can get it. That's a fact. And to have more money in your cap, you should have as much as you can at any time. So, and then you... Hopefully got the money if there's an opportunity there. But the way it's going, very hard to get good boards. I'm um, I'm thinking that um, I'm thinking that um, oh, what was I going to say? I've lost me lost me train of thought. I keep reading stuff, and we've gone for too long again. So I have to tie this up in a minute. Um. Tank Yank, g'day mate, how you going? Do you expect Sarah to play the side as named or is a sneaky chance of swapping a reserve player like Bellamy does? I think Katani Katoga is a is an outside chance. I think he will be the 18th man. Um I don't think there'll be I don't think Bronson Cherry will come into the side unless Karaz or someone is still got a niggle or an injury. Um injuries will dictate whether Bronson Cherry comes in. But there is, a, there is a slight opportunity potentially for Katani Katoga to play. But I think he'll be 18th man this week and it'll be the team that's named. And apparently the Fox has put himself in the picture. He's he's he's, he's training like – he's at training, running around like he's going to play this week, um, <laughs> which I, I don't think he will. Do you think Seraldo last last the end of the season? 100% I do. Unless they call an emergency, um, you know, they get the numbers to vote off the board and the new board comes in, sacks Gus, sacks the coach. That's the only way it'll happen. Um, Cameron Serrato needs 
to be given the three years to, to get the players he needs. Um, and he needs to hold to show resolve. It, it was Trent, people forget Trent Barrett gave Jake Avrilo two weeks to be the halfback. The, the player that trained there all preseason with, with Matt Burton, they come out and won the first game. They should have won the second. I think he had one one um, kick that went dead in goal. That was his error. And then they dropped him and brought in Brandon Wakem. Wakem had a really good start to the game. We we lost by a point to Manly. They went then went to the Melbourne Storm. Looked pretty good early. Was holding them out. Was going back and forward. And then Ryan Pappenhausen came to play, and uh, the boys just their structures fell apart. They lost confidence. Lost forty nil. Then Kyle Funning was bought for the Panthers in the next game, and he went all right. I think we lost that. You know, we're down thirty nil and lost thirty to eighteen or something. So my point is, Trent Barrett was chopped and changed the spine after two weeks, and that's to me what fucked our whole season. And that's why he didn't last ten rounds. If you go back through it in those games. That team was actually pretty gritty, and apart from that Melbourne loss and a game where they did, they got got a player. I think had a player sent off against Souths, and happens every time we play them. But um, we, we lost to the Raiders by I think fourteen to six, and it was or fourteen to four, and it was six four with five minutes to go. Um, we lost by the Knights by six points or something. Had a lot of close losses. Two close wins, two wins, eight losses. He got sacked. Um, Serrato, Gus is going to sack Cameron Serrato. He's, this is Serrato's second year in charge of a team which had no forwards last year. And I was saying he did everything right because I know for a fact he didn't. Some rookie errors in there for sure. But he had Mick Potter there as his assistant, you know. Tanga to Tower are in reserve grades, no slouch. They were all telling him what they think. You know, it's, it's a, there's reviews every week or every month they're done um, on everyone in, in the club, including Gus, right? So a, a short story with a long answer is Cameron Serrato will be the coach. Um, <laughs> Tell it down like Gus, a lot longer than I'll be alive. <laughs> we all saw how that ended up, though, didn't we? Would Serrata consider bringing in Giles Skelton or is he a defensive liability? G'day again, Tim. I think Giles Skelton and the dog father thinks Giles Skelton should be playing and um, he, he's putting a lot of pressure on Gus. Um, Gus, you know, his Adam's apple was under under a bit of stress um, when last time he spoke to the dog father, but... Um, I don't think he's a defensive liability. I'd say that his reads aren't as good as some of the other players out there. He doesn't have that turnaround and chase speed that the likes of um, the Fox and Wilson have got. They have the ability to, if they are caught out, to, to still get to their man in many cases. Um, but in saying that, he brings a lot of other stuff to the table. Um And that's um, definitely, uh, I, I think he's an outside chance if there's an injury. But for me, the pecking order seems to be, I don't have all the, this is what I see from what I look at with the way they name the side. And it's generally spot on. Um, it's Connor Tracy's now the next man up. After that, it's um, Bronson Cherry and then Gerard Skelton. In that order, and I'd say Eli Clark isn't too far behind them. That's the way I see it happening and panning out. Another good one. Um, I've noticed Colored Rajab is named for the Ron Massey, Ron Massey Cup side. Yeah, that's where he's at, mate. Um, I don't think he'll play first grade in twenty twenty four. Um, but I, I wish him all the best, and I hope he can. Unfortunately, uh, I said this with the politics stuff. 
when when Buzz Rothfield as people starts ringing the juniors when Carlo Lawapu was coming into the team, which Buzz was all over, they all knew about it. Um, there was a big push to have him brought into Canterbury. Um, Fox were all over it. There, there was a bit of, you know, I can't talk about it too much really, but they had incentives to talk Olawapu up, um, and that doesn't come from Gus or Sorado or anything like that. That's outside of them. So when you've got... So Buzz was ringing around some of the juniors, the Haywoods, the Rajabs, speaking of parents, speaking of family, and and essentially um, like he does, likes to do, to, to put Canterbury down, he, he all but named Coloured Rajab as the one who was looking to sign elsewhere because Carla Lawapu was, was brought to our club. And that's the exact sort of thing. And it look, the Bulldogs juniors being a pretty small um, pathway, a, a small league, a small bunch of leagues with 3,000 juniors. Sometimes it's been 2,500 at different times. Like it's not huge. And it, and they're, you know, fighting borders with, um, with a bunch of other leagues the Dragons and the Sharks, um, the Eels, the Tigers, uh, or the Maggies. So when you've got all that sort of that fight for, for your area, these kids, you know, coming out of the great high schools in Canterbury, they, they've always felt, um, they've always felt, you know, pretty safe, like they're the, they're the ones who are going to be the next Bulldogs, right? And now that Gus has gone out there with the help of, when, when we say Gus, Gus has employed the people, Gus has found the people to go and set these things up. So when Buzz, when Canterbury is successful in however many years it takes, what Buzz will say if he's still alive is that Gus didn't do the pathways for Canterbury, it was these other people who set them up. And he'll be partly right. But Gus is the one who, who goes and pays for him and says, we need that person or, you know, that person comes to theirs and says what their vision is or he knows people that can do that really well and gets them in, gets them employed and they go and do the job, right? Long answers, sorry. So you have all these pathways set up externally. The, the Northern Rivers and that was set up before Gus come to the club, but you've got the Toowoomba, you've got, Thunderbird, you've got New Zealand, two two academies there. All these academies, and the fact that they also go and sign a heap of schoolboy talent when it's unavailable, when it's available, right? Because they're blocking up their pathways of all these players, kids like Rajad get really, um, they get nervous, right? And their families get nervous because. They can, they're on the cusp of everything that they've worked hard, so hard for in their lives, you know what I mean? And and that's where the the envy and and and, and all the, you know, the jealousy and all that comes out of it. And that's when they could see that other people move past them in the pecking order. And that's where it comes from. And the club, I think the club really has a lot of time for Khaled Rajab and... Him get him playing first grade against the Knights may have been a baptism baptism of fire by design. Um, you know, it's certainly not the way to bring kids in. They had no other option. You know, Burton couldn't play that game. Kept being selected as 18th man. You know, the conspiracy theorists might wonder if that was by design as well. Um just to open up Pandora's box. But you have a situation where Raja is completely exposed on that right edge. And, um, you know, against a left edge attack, which was, you know, had a few weeks getting back together with Fitzgibbon and, and Buddy Ponger and, and Best and the like. You know, that's... Um, that was really tough for Rajab, and it would have hurt him a lot being a bulldog. Just like it would have hurt Jackson Torpenay on Josh Reynolds' day. Um, 
who led in three or four sock tries. These kids, will they ever play first grade again? Um, it's a long way off for them. But Ron Massey Cup, that's just where we're at now. We've got we've got all these juniors that have come out of flag and they're too old for flag now. And that's where they're going to play. Last year they used SG ball players and, and they basically had two flag teams. And sometimes they would swap the whole side from like because flag were doing so well. They then swapped them to the Rob Massey side and brought the, the young kids from Massey to give them a go and flag. And, um, yeah, it was quite – it was a bit of a debacle, to be honest. If um, – and there was people going back and forth and it's, it's just that bottleneck of, of junior talent. And it puts a lot of pressure on the local pathways. But that's what they need. They need to be challenged. So you go to Penrith, there's 9,000 juniors all in the same area, and they're still bringing in people from Bathurst and Dubbo, right? And the competition for spots, I swear you could go to third grade Penrith and probably find a player that that would start in our New South Wales Cup team. I'm, I'm sure of it, that we probably won't hear of and probably never play NRL. That is the depth that they have. It's the same in Brisbane. It's the same in Queensland. There's kids that just have the talent but just aren't able to crack the other juniors in there and they don't always make it. But if they're in smaller systems or smaller pathways, they probably find a pathway to first grade or reserve grade at least. So it's a long answer to give, but I like to say what I reckon about these things um, and try and be as fair as I can. What round do you think Crichton will be number one and Sexton in the seven? I think that'll um, probably be in 2025, Mark, to be honest, if Sexton doesn't leave. Um, I love Toby. I think I think he's got a good attitude too, and I think he'll be humming. Sexton will come in. Look, if there's no injuries and... I'd say round nine or ten, maybe a magic round in Queensland. I think that's when we might see Toby. Um, yeah, so that's it, I think. I don't think we'll see Crichton at one. I think Tracy's ahead of him at one. I think Wilson's ahead of him at one. And uh, But I'm probably wrong there on that, that assessment. I don't think they're going to, you know, unless it's just the plan and I'm just going to slowly wait for him to, to go into that position, but I don't think so. I just don't think he's the best fullback in our team, in our top 30. He's definitely the best left or right, all right centre in our, in our club. Um, and I... Once you get Bronson Cherry humming, I think having Cherry on one side and, and Critter on the other is going to be very, very good for us. But we, we will see. We will see. If there's a situation where the back five, where they decide they have to have Wilson, they have to have the Fox, they have to have Tracy, and they have to have Cherry in first grade, it might be Blake Taff is the one that they move on. But I wouldn't see that happening for 10 rounds unless injuries force that hand. But if Taff, you know, if Taffy starts dropping the, dropping the pill, uh, and every game is like that, and he, and he loses all confidence, that they will make a change. That's usually when that happens. Don, agree with the focus on defence. We would have lost by fifty last year. Completion rate rate lost us any momentum. Three times we got our tactic in order. We looked good and scored. It's funny, um, you watch that right side attack, there's all this, you know, criticism that they didn't get it out to the left. And they, they made that criticism in the trial as well, especially when we when the Sharks went down a player. Um, which is fair enough, right? But I saw repetition of what they've obviously been doing at training. 
going through the numbers, engaging the line. We just didn't get that engagement out of the Kyle Flanagan's of the world. He just, I just don't, he's better as a hooker or being close to the run. It's how you're playing. Bloody hell, Ross. Don't come in here with any more racist shit. Um, the Red Times are going to attack all the good. What I was going to say is if you watch the um, New South Wales Cup game in the first grade side, the tries that were scored on the right edge look very slick to me. And while it was late in the game, Parra weren't tired from tackling, I can tell you that much. Round one, maybe round 10, they handle that a lot better. But if the game's played the same way, but, you know, two, two of the tries Skelton scored in the right corner were identical to the ones that Wilson scored in first grade. And I really like the play with kick out basically moving into 5-8, which he's done plenty of times at Penrith as well. And, you know, and Bert, Burton, the one running close to the ruck, throwing it out wide to Crichton on the chest. Great try. Very good try. So... Um, agree, we looked really good. Ross Palmer. So Sam Kerr is an Indian girl, um, or quarter Indian. All I'm going to say, Ross, is that I have an issue with the media because the media act like common sense is that people understand racism. When you got two... People don't understand when two dark-skinned people call each other a name of the racial implications that it can have. You don't know how people are affected and how people um, sort of act towards when they get racially vilified, whether it's from another dark-skinned person or, or from whoever. That's up to them for how they feel. No one should be telling Ezra Mam how to feel, right? He feels however he feels. That's the end of it. And tell, people can tell them to harden up. they got no right, really. But when it comes down to this issue, I understand that people don't understand why it affects the Indigenous community so harshly. And it also, it's affected the Melanesian, Polynesian, African, different um, Asian communities a lot. My mate lives in Japan. He married a girl there. Um... He experienced racism from them a lot of times, and well, more so discrimination. He won't get served in some places because he's not Japanese. When he starts talking fluent Japanese, they sort of let him in. Um, and you know, the basic, the basic thing that they think as the dominant culture in that place is that white people stink. <laughs> but anyway, that's just a bit of education for you. Sam Kerr, she's been charged, mate, and going to trial for calling someone a white bastard. Spencer Lenu is not going to trial. He doesn't have criminal charges against him, does he? So if we if we look at it, you know, at the end of the day, they're just going to learn not to bring anything which has to do with race into the discussion, white or black. This doesn't matter. But I don't know any, too many white people who get a, that offended when they get called a white something. Doesn't make, doesn't upset me. Because it's, I haven't been enslaved me whole lot. Anyway. Have a read of the kennel, bud. You will. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go to the kennel sometimes, mate. Some good stuff in there, but there's also a lot of stuff that they, um, you know, I've look. I, I got the text messages from RFM's wife, um, and and when that's the case, that just shows your human emotion and how things affect people. I know you weren't talking about that when you mentioned that, but the kennel gets some pretty good stuff on there. Um, and there's some people. I don't get a lot of these rumours anymore because I've cut myself off from the people who share them. 
essentially, because they're just grubs. They're just always looking to, you know, put the boss out there and be the one who knows everything and whatever else. And I'd just rather not know. Uh, the kennel forum is in meltdown. It's only around two. Yeah. See, people trading, they, they want to be so big. They would rather, they just let all the grubs and the scum say what they want to say. And that's it. I'd rather just boot them off, block them, and, and talk to people who can articulate why I'm wrong. They don't, it's not about people agreeing with me. It's about being able to articulate why you're wrong and, and, and not call the coach a fucking idiot or um, disrespect him or their family. That's all it is for me. I'm late to live. I don't know if this has been said. How do you feel about Connor Tracy on the wing? I feel we need a big body for me to skelt. Skelton would be perfect. And that goes along with Mark. Why would you put Tracy on a wing or is that a ruse? Well, Tracy's played plenty of wing, mate. He's probably more a winger than a centre. Um, it's just the fact that he has the ability to play centre and he's had to replace people there, which is why he's been called a utility. But is it a ruse? Um, for me, I, I think Tracy's faster than Karaz. But does Karaz want to be the battering ring? I'm happy for Tracy to be. I think Tracy might start at centre and Karaz on the wing. I think it might be a ruse. We saw that. We see with these team changes, they just replace the player. They don't usually shuffle things on on Team Tuesday. They just do that on the field. Um, we've seen it numerous times through coaches across the whole competition. So it's probably a ruse. It's a bit of a strong word. I think it's just more a case. So Josh Addo cars out, Connor Trace is in, and then we'll see where they end up on the field on Saturday or Friday night. Um. Yeah, so Connor Tracy on the wing. He's gonna he's gonna make good meters and yards and do whatever he's got to do. So there you go. Um, this will be the last question, guys. Time to go. I've gone way too long. Thanks to everyone who's come in and had a chat. Tracy's in the mold of an Edwards. I would have him at fullback. Put him in support of um, of CC with Taff. There you go. Look, I think Tracy might end up there at some point. He didn't have the preseason. Taff, they've given first crack. And, and if he can look, to me, Blake Taff's a first grader. And I've always said that. So let's hope he can get it done and Tracy can, we, and we just have that depth. But, you know, Tracy does, is, has got that ability to get good meters. He's had a few injuries though. Uh, he's a little bit bigger, bit bigger body, still pretty powerful and explosive. And I agree he can sort of play in that mold of a Dylan Edwards. That's where the fullbacks are moving. That's why they're not the, in the Stephen Crichton style anymore. You know, if you, they used to talk, what was his name? That bloody Dugan used to be a fullback, the big lanky fullback. You had Paul Hawk. Um, now it's it's the more chunky, nuggety, um, explosive types that are sort of fulfilling those roles, you know. Um, and that's where it's at. And I, and I do agree. All right, guys, thank you so much. Two hours. Pete, me and Pete talked about how I was only going to do it for half an hour today. Fucking fail. <laughs> Um, thanks for joining everyone. Hope you uh got something out of that and look forward to seeing you all after we win on Friday. Go the dogs. <laughs>